let's share with you how to beat a background check. First of all, this is for employers and employees. So if you're interested in how to beat a background check, this is gonna be some important information for you. First of all, I'm sitting in front of uh, background check equipment. We do sometimes upwards of 80 background checks a day. And uh, our contract is such that I cannot tell you who we do background checks for, but I will tell you this, that it's all subcontract at least through, uh, or for the FBI, the TBI, and then the Department of Justice, Homeland Security, those types of things. Um, I'll be as generic as possible on that. However, behind me is background check equipment. This is a fingerprint scanner. This is a very high-end camera to take pictures with. Uh, all that stuff, when we take a picture, we scan a fingerprint, makes a digital signature, and then goes into one of the databases of an agency. Um, so quite regularly, we have people come to do background checks um, typically employees, and I'm amazed when they are uh, coming in half-stoned or uh, inebriated to get a background check done to go work at a daycare. Um, uh, typically those coming in for the federal side of our business do not have those types of issues so much. However, uh, if you want to learn how to beat a background check, first I'm going to talk to employers. Employers. I'm gonna make a suggestion to you, and this is a unsolicited advice, but I see it happen on a daily basis, and you need to be smart about issuing background checks for people. So people come into your business, and uh, you like them, they got a decent resume, they got a couple referrals, and then you say, okay, we're gonna move to the next thing. You give them a coupon, uh, through get a background check, then you prepay for their background check. They come in here, or they don't come in here. That's the issue. I would say probably half of the people who sign up for, I hate to say menial jobs, but jobs that do not require professional um, licensing generally come in here uh, and fill about half the appointments. The other half just never show up. So you as an employer, you have, <clears throat> I'm going to tell you how to weed them out. Let's just, let's just do it this way. This, that's the easiest thing to do. If you have somebody that you're interested in, they have a good resume, they got some re referrals, you want to move forward to the next step, which is getting a background check done, this is what I would do if I were you. I would set up the appointment for them in front of them and say, hey, this is your background check appointment. Now, you'll be responsible for paying for this when you go in, but bring back your receipt and we will reimburse you for the background check once your background check clears. Now, let me tell you what this is going to do for you. It's going to save you time. Um, they're generally not going to go if they can't pass a background check to begin with. The other half is you're not prepaying for it, you're setting up the appointment for them, but you don't have money out of pocket that's stuck on a coupon code that you can't recuperate. And then, quite honestly, they're not going to show up if they can't pass a background check anyway. Uh, you just weeded out an unpotential employee because you just took one more step, which is, hey, this is, you know, it's however much, however much it is for what's safe. We do background checks in like 36 states, so every background check costs a different amount of money. However, um, if it's $36.50, you didn't waste $36.50 and then wait around for two weeks to see if that employee can pass their, their, their background check. Now, employees. That's good advice, by the way. Employees wanting to be the background check. Quite regularly, we have people that don't show up. And they never notified the employer because they didn't want the job in the first place, or which is quite it happens quite often. Just because somebody didn't get a background check doesn't mean that they're they're not able to pass a background check. What it often means is they quite frankly didn't want the job anyway. They didn't like you know, what you're paying per hour, or they just decided it wasn't for them, or they had a better offer. So don't consider the fact that they just couldn't pass a background check. However, uh, employees, I know a lot of times you don't come in and get your background check done because either you can't pass or you'd rather have another job. And the way we know this is employers call the time, hey, we had Mary Sue come in and Mary Sue told us that she already had her background check done, but she hadn't got her results back yet. This is a computer, in case you didn't know, it's a computer back here. Um, every appointment is logged in on this computer. If somebody doesn't come in and go through their background check, it never clears out of the system. There's three logs kept, all right? So one is somebody signs in when they come in, okay? And uh, once they're signed in here, then there is a digital log that's kept into the database. 
Then there is also a printed receipt kept. So it's really two digital logs and then one hard paper copy. If someone comes in, they sign in our book. They don't get into the system without having signed in first. Quite often we have employers calling and saying, hey, so-and-so said they came in to get their background check done, but it just never came back. It got lost. Now, does that happen occasionally? Extremely, extremely rare. Like when I say rare, I've probably done 150,000 background, well, maybe not that many, a lot of background checks. Uh, our company has, or companies done more than that. Um, they don't get lost. I mean, rarely do they ever get lost. So if you have an employee who's saying, you know, they just, they just simply didn't come back, call, check the registry, call the company, see if, they're, uh, if their appointment cleared out of the system. If it didn't, they just didn't come in, okay? All right, last thing, employees wanting to be a background check. So let me be very frank and clear. When someone walks in our door, we know pretty quickly with the first two questions asked whether or not you're gonna be able to pass a background check. Those questions and answers let us know, hey, they're here to get a job and they can pass a background check or they shouldn't be here. So, as far as beating a background check, multiple points of match on a fingerprint, okay? We'll also get a camera, high, a high resolution camera that takes both retinals and it takes facial recognition. All of that goes into a database. We also make sure that you have the proper identification, state issued or federal issued identification, before we begin the digital imaging process, which is both for the fingerprints and for the facial recognition and for your retinas. You really, in this day and age, are going to have a very, very, very difficult time beating a background check. So if you have any questions, um, please feel free to put them in the comments below. We'll be glad to help you out. Uh, employers, be smart. Employees, be smart. The best thing that you can do is um, not get yourself in trouble. And employers, don't fork out the money until you know you're hiring a good employee. It just doesn't make sense. And you're going to know immediately, immediately when you ask them about doing a bad background check, they're going to, you know, you're, you're going to know if it's a, it's a good employee to hire. Hey, do us a favor. This, you know, we're family supported, family run on this end, although we're a contractor for the government. Uh, just like and subscribe. We give lots of good security information. And also, we're the only place in the U.S. where if you have any of our services, you can get firearms at wholesale prices. Thanks.